You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. <laughs> oh, la la. I've got my take on a traditional French walnut tartare for yous. Or tartare aux noixes, as the French like to call it. I was always good at French at school, me like. Mr. Chevrolet, my French teacher, was a strange fella, though. Don't get me wrong, I used to absolutely lap the knobhead up. But he had to leave when I was in second year. He battered a fourth year for knocking his prize fleur de lis over in the classroom. He was still laying blows on the clumsy get when the police turned up. Anyway, enough of all that absurdity. Let's get our pate sucre sorted, eh? With 200 grams of all-purpose flour. And then we want to go in with 50 grams of sugar. And a nice pinch of salt. And then we're going to combine all those dry ingredients in our machine. Or stir them up if you're doing this with your mains. Either way, you want to get all those dry ingredients nice and well combined. And then after that, we're going to go in with 100 grams of softened butter here. And once that's all boxed off, we're going to blitz it all up here. Or if you haven't got a machine, rub it all together with your doikts until it resembles Chapelua de Pain. Hey, it's a beautiful language, isn't it? My pronunciation might be a bit off from time to time, like, because Mr Chevrolet's replacement was the PE teacher who spoke French with a Teesside accent. But this one's for you, Mr Chevrolet. Mr Goat Farmer, that means. So now we've added a beaten egg to that mix and a tablespoon of lemon juice. We're going to give it a good stir up and incorporate it all before we get the old machine involved again. And then we're going to bring it together in the machine nice and slowly. Don't rush this step. Just give your machine short bursts with this. You need to have lots of patty ends, and it should come together slowly. But if you find it's a little bit dry, just add a little tiny splash of water to it. And I promise you it's going to be absolutely super duper Colin Cooper. And now that that's all come together, we just need to get it out of our bowl. Don't touch those blades though, they'll have your fingers off. And then we'll lightly flour our work surface. Get our patty sucre on top there and give it a little bit of a knead to bring it together. You don't want to overwork it here though. You just want to give it a little bit of a leathering about just to bring it together. And then it'll be easy to roll and put in your pan. And hey, je ne regret a rien when I make this because it's tasty as. So now that we've brought all that together, we're going to get it in the old emballage plastique and stick it in the frigo for about una demi heure. And when it's had a chance to relax, we're going to roll it out. So we're going to bring some baking paper in here and flour it. And bring our pastry back in. And we want to roll that out until it's about 5 millimetres thick. Hang on, hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, yeah. 5 uh, millimetres thick. Yeah, 5 millimetres. And the base of my pan is 24 centimetres. So you want to allow for that. And the sides of the pan. It's a pretty standard size like. So just make sure you roll your pastry out big enough. And then once you've absolutely smashed that one out of the park, you can just fold it together one side at a time like that. Brush off the excess flour as you go. And I reckon this is the easiest way to get it in your pan rather than rolling it around a rolling pin and then trying to faff on with it too much. And then just pick it up and plonk it in your pan and then unfold it. And it is pretty delicate this like. So don't worry if it falls apart, just mash it into your pan with your hands. And then you can start to form it into the right shape and make it all even. Lovely colour that pastry. Reminds me of Mr Chevrolet's 2CV. It was the spitting image of this one here. He used to make us wash it for him on a dinner time. And then he'd take one of us out for a little drive. Never picked me though. Probably for the best. The lads who came back always seemed dead upset. So it must have been an uncomfortable ride like. So now that we've got our pastry all formed in our pan, we can just take off the excess around the edges with a rolling pin. It's dead easy. And we're going to prick the pastry here with our old fourchette. Don't go all the way through your pastry though. This is just to stop it from puffing up like Gerard Depardieu when we blind bake it. And blind bake it just means bake it when you can't see it. Because we're going to put some baking paper in there and we're going to put some beans on top now. You can use any old beans and pulses or whatever. I'm using chickpeas here. Pour them on top there. And then get them on a baking tray. And stick them in your oven for 25 minutes. At 160 degrees fan. At the bottom of the oven, mind. 
And while that's quiss on all four, let's crack on with the old remplissage, eh? So we've got 300 grams of walnuts here, and I'm blending them in my machine, but you can chop them dead fine with a knife if you've got an afternoon to spare. And this filling couldn't be easier, so we're going to start with three eggs and one yolk. Keep the white. You're not going to waste that white, you're going to need that later. And then add 150 millilitres of double cream, 100 grams of white sugar, 100 grams of brown sugar, and a good pinch of sel. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of orange zest to that. And now for my secret ingredient, I've got this African cream liqueur. It's called Amarula. Now I don't work for Amarula. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but this works perfectly in this tart. Traditionally, the French would use Grand Marnier, but it's up to you, eh? Use your imagination, eh? And you need 175 millilitres of that. Baileys would work good. Coffee would work good. Don't use Tizer or anything like that, though. So we've added 75 grams of melted butter to that now. And we're going to stir it all up. Incorporate all those wet ingredients. And then we're ready to hoy our noixes in there. And that's all our ingredients for our filling. So give them a nice stir up. And let all those ingredients have a bit of a laugh and carry on together for a bit. And you're done with your filling. It's an absolute cinch, this. So get your base in now. And you want to take those beans out. And once you've taken the beans out, you want to put it back in the oven for about five or ten minutes to dry it out. And that'll be fully cooked now, but not too brown. But we need to let it cool down again fully. And now we're going to be sharp as a dart. And once that base is fully cooled, we're going to brush it with some blank de earth. This will seal the base and make sure we don't knack this tart. You want to beat the egg white first so it spreads nice and easy. But you don't have to go overboard with the beating like Mr. Chevrolet did. Thinking back now, the poor fella must have had issues and tissues to do what he did like. So make sure you give this base a good covering with the egg white. And then once you've finished with it, you want to get it back in the oven for about six or seven minutes to set that egg white and then get it out and then you've got to let it cool down again because that base has got to be cold when this filling goes in and then you get your filling in just pour it in and we want to bake this in a preheated oven at 180 degrees no fan don't have your fan setting on and you want to bake it for between 35 and 40 minutes on a baking tray at the bottom of the oven and when it comes out it'll look like this it's cracked a little bit but don't worry about this when this cracks it calms down as it cools unlike Mr Chevrolet when he cracks he smashes a ginger teenager's head in so give it the old cure dent test now and that should come out clean there and set toot and look at that set un absolutely nectar tart rich Exciting and dead inviting. Just like Bridget Bardo in her heyday, walking down the champ cellices. And I like to finish it with some zest to orange here. Lash a few walnut halves on top. And it's perfect with some vanilla ice cream. And I'm going to neck this now with a nice cup of cafe and put that Jules et Jim on and get all cultured in that. My mate Sean the Pawn heard it's about threesomes, so I'll check it out and get back to you. Cheers, Mr. Chevrolet. Cheers, everyone. And see you plus tard, eh? Au revoir.